Who's this disco ninja? Wow, what a great <laughs> audience. <laughs> one clap. <laughs> one clap, one person. <laughs> Hello and welcome to My Creative Brain. Today I am talking to Dan Mitchell. When I was young they used to take the mickey out of me for having specs. They called me things like Specky, Four Eyes, Specs Offender. But it all stopped one magical day when I was diagnosed epileptic. Then they started calling me Mr Shake and Vac and telling jokes like, what you call an epileptic in a bath? A jacuzzi. And then one clever sod combined both ailments into a handy bite-sized insult and called me a speckleptic. Yeah, thanks, Dad. But I used to entertain myself as a kid. And you never forget that day when you find a really good stick and all your friends are jealous. They're going, Dan, can I have a go with your stick? And I said, no. I had a very deep voice for a six-year-old. But Dan, what are you going to do with a stick? Well, first, I thought I would wield it like a sword. Then I thought, no, I shall use it like a gun. Then I thought, no, I'm going to dip it in dog muck and chase girls. Still using the same pulling technique today. Still very, very lonely. Hello, Dan. Hello there. Welcome to the Apocalypse Living Room. Oh, it's marvellous. I love the, the brickwork and curtains and old school TV. Doesn't it feel nice to be in a venue? Oh, it feels nice to be anywhere, to be mm. honest, a venue especially. Makes me feel warm inside. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to chat to you a little bit about writing, a little bit about comedy, just about your creative life in general. The first thing I would like to know is what's your earliest memory of either writing or sort of being creative, like when you were small? Uh, when I was small, I was always like, you know, um, drawing pictures and creating stories with these pictures before I, my, my writing was actually any good. Uh -huh. um, one of the first things I remember is, um, I think it must have been about four, um, in school I'd written a story called uh, What I Want to do Be When I Grow Up and it's like I want to be a cartoonist I oh. have already written a book called Cartoon Animals <laughs> and yeah and here's an example of a cartoon animal it was usually a frog because uh, I like the way their hands were <laughs> Do frogs have hands? Well you know, when you're I a kid, so. hands, feet, you know, it's all the same, isn't it? But it was that sort of moment. It's like, oh, I'm being creative here and I'm creating sort of narratives and stuff like that. Nice. So was that, it was kind of like the story writing and the, the drawing the characters as well? Yeah. I mean, because I didn't have all the words that I wanted there, but I could, yeah. I could make an explosion happen on, on the screen. <laughs> I could make something, you know, look vaguely like what it was supposed to. And I could understand the, the story then. <laughs> and that was, it was more for me than anything else. Yeah. And what, what was the point at which you'd kind of gone from that stage where you were sort of doing it for yourself to the point where you would actually start to consider yourself a writer or an artist? Well, it certainly wasn't when I was uh, four. Uh, <laughs> um, I went through a few stages because I was trying to find what I wanted to do because I, you know, I, I performed as well. I did lots of like, you know, school plays and, and, and things like that. And um, it took me a long time before I actually considered myself um, a writer. Mm. I mean, that's that's more of a sort of recent thing. Even though I've I've written you know things for TV and radio, but even then I did I, w I was just like imposter syndrome. Like I'm not a proper writer, even though they've given me money for it. Yeah, it's only now <laughs> that I think no, actually I am a, so a writer. So it tells you like I am employing you to be a writer. You are a writer. Uh, yeah, like, but, am but I? You'll, <laughs> you'll find out that I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna find me out. It's all gonna come tumbling down. Exactly. So with uh, your writing, your comedy, your performance, do you find that it's been helpful in sort of getting past things in your life, like getting past fears like that or any other sort of situations in your life? Oh, massively. I mean, I've always sort of um, been one of these people who sort of jokes around, um, and that's usually a sign of, of <laughs> sort of fear. Yeah. It's, it's a way of <laughs> deflecting it. Performing is often a way of deflecting it. And um, so, you know, comedy was one of those those ways that I, I really sort of, um, I really got into it and started um, flippantly making jokes and testing them on people. And then I thought, maybe I could do this in front of a proper audience. Mm. And then I did that, and I was like, that was the biggest thrill but it, it got me through a, a lot of um my sort of uh my nerves and my my confidence was pretty low 
um, as a teenager. Yeah. So, it, you know, it helped me massively. And um, you mentioned to me as well that you found it helpful in terms of your epilepsy. Yeah, well, I've had epilepsy since um, I was a teenager. And it was around the time that I was supposed to be learning to drive, uh, which knocked that on the head. Uh, mm. And I was supposed to be, you know, having that independence. And instead, I found myself being more and more sort of insular because of it it was like um, I was stuck in uh, a tiny village yeah I was st- uh, I couldn't drive and get places um so I, I'd end up um writing things about how I was feeling and um you know, a lot of the time I was in denial about the epilepsy and I'd, I'd go out drinking and and, and, mm. and misbehaving as any teenager would forgetting that actually it had an effect on me it's but but quite important yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> but I, I, I ended up writing and I've written over the years lots of things which have helped me to understand it as I've grown to understand it uh, you know over over the years as well and uh, I've written comedy about it because if you're going to dress something and make people laugh about it then they're not sure if they should be laughing at it. <laughs> I, I absolutely love that if I'm at a comedy gig where everyone's like, <laughs> um, yeah, are, we, are we laughing? <laughs> I've, I've actually performed for um, epilepsy charities, oh, yeah. done my epilepsy set, yeah. and I've never offended anyone with epilepsy, only people who may have heard of someone with epilepsy who okay, think that they should on, be yeah. offended. So I'm offended on your behalf. <laughs> exactly. You, go, you can't say that. And it's like, well, I have, and I am, and it's me I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm literally uh, mocking the ridiculousness of, of life. Mm-hmm. And, and that I, I think if you take life too seriously, you're not going to enjoy any of it. Very, very true. So how would you say that writing, performing, things like that, how do they relate to well-being for you? Um, well, performing in particular is is something you get an instant hit out of it. If you get cause a reaction in someone, and mm-hmm. it can be oh, absolutely amazing, and you're elated for at least five minutes, uh, <laughs> at least five, <laughs> exactly five minutes. Uh, <laughs> uh, it doesn't last because afterwards you go, I could have done better. And they go, oh, they must have been fooled. And you do get this, this feeling, this, this, this extreme highs and lows, which makes it great for, for a short term sort of thing. Um, but it also can sort of destroy any confidence if things go badly. So, I mean, that is something that um, I've done over the years and I've performed and I've, I've had a great time and it has boosted my confidence, like I said. But um, the, as for the writing, the writing gives you more time to analyse things mm-hmm. and you can, you can put down um, feelings, you, you can put down feelings that you may not ever have properly considered and really examine uh, an idea and turn it into a, an abstract that will help you understand because that's what stories are really they're, mm-hmm. they're a way of uh, um, helping you understand things if you look at all the greek myths or the you know norse mythology they're a way of understanding the world i love myths yeah so do i i absolutely <laughs> love them and that's why i'm sort of like creating my own myths and, and a lot of them are about my life i've created my own mythology about epilepsy and stuff as if like when you have a seizure you travel to this other world and and it's a way of like examining it Um, is it like you work out i thought about this before in terms of songwriting you kind of work out what you think about something by the act of writing about it yeah absolutely and he's like oh i didn't know i thought that (laughs) you've come to a conclusion that you may not have even considered yeah um and and you know other times you'll go no, that that's that's wrong. I don't I don't think that. But then you go, you look back at it again. You go, actually, you know, no, there's some truth there. You will find some truth, uh, absolutely, uh, in in when you're writing about something particularly, you know, close to you, something you know, emotional, something like that. It, it it's amazing for for getting those thoughts out. Mm. Are there things, any things in particular that you would be able to identify that kind of affect your confidence in either way that like boost it? or lower it i guess you you mentioned about the sort of like live performance thing like if something goes down well that instant hit if it doesn't it's kind of the opposite well that's it i'm 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 better at taking um something going badly than i am at (laughs) taking something that goes well because when something goes well i know it's only fleeting something badly i've got something to aim for and i can get better at it um it's it but that instant hit, that mm-hmm. hit of dopamine when something goes right, you you, you can read the faces in the room, uh-huh. and it is it's it's wonderful. It is wonderful, and it, it it's almost like a hug, and you can you can go out and you 
you feel fantastic. But, oh, those hugs that we're not allowed right uh, now. Yes, those <laughs> those hugs. But um, it, it it's it's a wonderful feeling. But uh, th- you're constantly chasing that hit, mm-hmm. uh, and that's why um. Well, I still do comedy. I'm a, a little bit more selective. Nowadays, I'm doing it for me rather than trying to impress an audience. Okay. I'm trying to write things that I like. And I think mm-hmm. rather than things that I know will get me that hit, rather than those easy gags. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's something a, a bit more complex, which I think that I'll enjoy no matter what. And um, that gives me more of a lasting hit, as it were. Yeah. Like a slow burn. It, absolutely, absolutely. I will feel happy about what I've done, even if the audience were sort of slightly confused. <laughs> I mean, like, I do stand up as a seagull, a Geordie seagull. And um, it was based on a, a, a sort of an incident when I saw a, a seagull um, going through my recycling bin. To, <laughs> and I thought he might be trying to steal my identity. And the idea went from truth. <laughs> and then I, I made a seagull costume and started imagining... A seagull's version of the of the world, uh, and and I, d- I thought people are going to think I'm insane, and yes, but those who got it got it, and those who didn't didn't, and it's like that's brilliant. I've, I've literally split the room here. It might seem insane, but I'm just wondering now whether you're the owner of the Instagram account Stephen the Seagull, who I've had quite a long conversation with when I was in Brighton. Ah, because I took a photo seagull. with the seagull, in, and this account replied to me, being like, "Hey." <laughs> It's me. <laughs> well, you see, Stephen the Seagull is obviously named after Stephen Seagal, mm-hmm. which is like, yeah, that's Everyone's that's favorite. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> it's a good it's a good joke. But I tried to make mine have a, just a normal human name that is just you know. What is your seagull's name? It's called Darren Masterton, <laughs> and he's he's a Geordie, and he's just very relaxed, and you know. I agree with um, very human names for animals. Yeah. I was used to one of a cat called Chris. Well, why not? Why yeah. not? I mean, the thing is, it's it's just, it, you know, I, I didn't go for the, the obvious joke. I'm not saying, that, you know, there's nothing wrong with Stephen the, Se- the Seagull. That's a great name. But it's just like... Darren Masterton is Darren funny, Darren Masterton is just like, yeah. And I've performed as him and myself in one night and had a, a no one knew we were the same person. So. <laughs> I love it. So during the pandemic, the various lockdowns, what has that been like for your creative process, your routine? What's that been like? Well, performance-wise, mm. there's been very little opportunity. Weed. <laughs> exactly. I have done the odd um, online gig, but you can't get that instant hit. Mm-hmm. You don't, you know, because you can see people there, but they're muted in not literally muted with a mute button. They're they're muted because they're just watching a screen. Yeah, it's not the same. You can't get an instant reaction. You can't see everything at once, and you can't get the whole feeling. So that that automatically stops that you can't go for those mm. instant hits you have to sort of um go in a bit more deep so i've been trying to write as much as possible no i've been i've been uh, I've, these are a, a huge selection um i have a huge selection of, of notebooks because i love stationery. very very nice notebooks oh, I, we I discussed the stationery. absolutely love them absolutely love, love them. them and um i i carry uh, you know a lot of them are sort of like half full and then mm. i'll go on to another one because i've got a, a, a big idea which i think is going to take a long time yeah and then it'll <laughs> fill some in there and then the others will get filled up later on and there's some which are just battered because they're just all rough ideas scrawled on trains and buses and stuff like that i've just had a memory right yes i think that i saw you at a gig and i think it was like 10 years ago and you had a nice notebook i don't think we knew each other and i think i commented on your notebook and it's just come back to me it's quite possible and if it was 10 years ago that notebook will probably not have a cover now it'll be i don't think it had a cover then yeah there we are i think the cover had like fallen off separately and i was like oh that's nice. yeah well, exactly <laughs> that that's what happens because the ones that i use all the time are usually pocket sized or you know mm. and they fit in my bag and in my pocket and they, they get battered and but they've got some amazing notes in it which which don't necessarily go on the lines they will go across the page and and it, it's like my yeah. it shows how my mind properly works and yeah. then there'll be arrows like sometimes like leading from like 10 pages along back to that one and this is like a reference <laughs> you know or an asterisk and this is like no idea what page it yeah. refers to it's like look for the asterisk <laughs> to, to, to if you had that. like a notebook that just like started from the middle and sort of folded out in every direction that would be oh, how, get, you, like how a your spider diagram going yeah. <laughs> well, it, well that's the sort of thing I, I do I have I'm I have paper piled up everywhere and I can make sense of it. If anyone tried to read my notes, they would be 
wondering what the heck was going on. Go in your house and be like, serial killer. <laughs> well, yeah, apparently, if, if you looked at some of the stuff, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I don't know what's in half of these. But if I... Uh, no, that's that's actually... Oh, no, that's... It was creepy. That's why you didn't read it out. That's yeah, what I reckon. That, no, it was, it, that was actual <laughs> just boring notes. Yeah, I was... Was that just like a shopping list or this something? This is actually... No, here's a little note I made when I was um, um, uh, performing for uh, an orangutan charity. Uh, <laughs> and it had an orangutan called Doyok in it. So this is a... You know, it's like I was out drinking with my mate Doyok. And it's just like <laughs> me talking about drinking with an orangutan. Which makes sense to me, but anyone else saw that. And it's just like... What? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but the, in lockdown... It's it's been very hard uh, to sort of write uh, as much. I you know I've had a place to write um, mm-hmm. before. I had an office in the house, and that's where I would write, and it was good. I had somewhere to differentiate between work and um, and the rest of the house. Now my wife is working from home, so she's got the office because she's got um, sort of like I'm not saying a, a, a more important job, but she does, she does work for a, an international charity, which you know okay. helps people's lives. Whereas mine, you know, so it's been harder for me. Mm-hmm. Then I hired another office. I paid for it to have an office, and I can't go in there because of lockdown. Mm. So um, trying to find somewhere to write is really important because I'm easily distracted, and yeah. unless I've got this actual spot, and I go, this is where I write. Yeah. Um, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. Um, Do you think that all of the all the things of like not really being able to perform and they're not feeling like you have the space has that been weird for your mental health? It has very much so. I mean, it's because uh, the writing is one thing, hmm. and the performance is like testing out those ideas out, and then you go back and you edit, and then you it's a back and forth sort of thing. They have they work sort of the, um, together, but with one of those taken out of play, yeah, I can't test things. So it's only and basically re- writing things and then rereading them and doubting myself and then rereading them and doubting myself and and it's just like because I've got no feedback yeah now I could give it to people to read but it's not necessarily the same because you don't necessarily yeah. people might be too nice you get an honest reaction from an audience yeah. they're, they're absolutely good if they yeah, were in here yeah, they literally having their drinks mm, they, they, yeah they'd be smiling or laughing or just talking amongst themselves and ignoring me and <laughs> it's just like do. that is it's like okay well if i can't maintain their attention it's not great so yeah i guess it's a, a sign not not the kind of sign you want but <laughs> well yeah but it, it it's great i mean sometimes it's them uh, mm. but sometimes it's it's my work so <laughs> i mean i've i've done storytelling nights online but once again then they're, they're not the same mm. they're not the same because you um yeah, you just can't get the, the, the genuine feeling. You, you, you can see people it's hanging on your a, words. A back and forth, isn't mm. it? It's the same with, obviously, with singing or any kind of performing. Like, I find it much harder to do if there's not an audience there. Yeah. I just kind of do this, like, just half kind of <laughs> version of it. It's and like, there's an audience there. You're like, oh, okay, right, okay. Because it's your job then to invigorate them. Yeah. You, you're sort of transferring your words, your energy into them. Mm-hmm. And they're feeding it back to you, giving yeah. you energy, and it's like a, this constant loop. But when your words are just under a paper, or you're, you're going into a microphone mm. and just into an electronic device, yeah. it's, it, it, no, it it's stops kind of it. It's sterile. It is, very yeah. much so, yeah. Yeah. In your day-to-day life, what is it most often that inspires you to sit down and write? Whew, sitting down to write is, is sometimes really hard. Mm. It's one of those things um, that I have to force myself to do. Um, and I will procrastinate as much as possible uh, to avoid Air it. Air five. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's like, oh, I'm so creative, but instead I'm going to clean this cupboard. I am going to hoover, which I hate doing. I'm going to rearrange all the Tupperware. Literally, yes. I am going to scrub the backyard, even though it is, we're in the middle of a storm outside. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do that rather than do it. It's one of those things I, um, I have to just say, right. It's like going to the gym. <laughs> that respect. I yeah. feel better afterwards, mm-hmm. but while I'm there, I kind of hate it. <laughs> it's just kind of hard to start, isn't it? Is it? Once you start, um, and it is literally 
if you've got got to do some writing, just write. Mm-hmm. You don't have to write what you you know. Everyone. The problem is that most people get st- stopped by the, th- the fact that they think that every word has to be perfect to begin yeah. with. Uh, but it's not. No, you just start writing anything. You could, um, If you've seen The Shining, uh, as a fine <laughs> example there, he starts writing um, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, and he writes it continuously. Um, the idea is not to write it continuously. Mm. And don't start with a typewriter. Um, sometimes a, a computer screen can be really difficult to uh, because everything comes out perfectly. Just scroll on paper so that that way you can doodle as yeah. well you can doodle you can write some words you can start you know creating a sort of character or, or, or a basic scene and and and, and or, or just like a sentence that you could base things around and uh, you know um something you saw and and you go from there and you think about all the permutations of something you've, yeah. you know, you've seen and you you just have to force yourself and 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 that's it um make sure that you've got no excuses you've got a cup of tea you've got a you know um some biscuits there uh after you've had lunch you've had a shower all the shopping's been done and make sure like, oh there's nothing left to- okay, exactly you, do it you have to, you, you will end up with a with a spotless house um <laughs> i've got an excuse that my dog uh, gets in the way she's oh she needs attention and it's just like but the last time I spoke to you on a video call, your dog was sat on the chair with you at the same time. Well, yeah, she does like to be involved. So it's kind of literally in the way. Yeah, literally. <laughs> but when I'm seriously writing, she is on the floor or in her bed, and that's it. Oh, that's serious yeah. writing time. That's it. I mean, because she she knows that I'm not paying her any attention because she is once again a way of procrastination. I've taken her out for a walk. I've yeah. taken her out for a long walk. It's because, all done. Yeah, and I get back and I'm I'm there. So this kind of leads me into that whole thing. I liked what you were saying about like the computer screen because I find I don't like write lyrics very often on a computer because you instantly sort of start formatting it and like thinking about the font that it's in and stuff like that. You're like, no, 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 just write it down in a in a nice book. But it's or, or, it doesn't have to be a nice book. You could write it down in any book and then you could transfer it to a nice book yeah. and then you could transfer it to the screen if you want to mm-hmm. but the fact is the screen yeah automatically makes it look as if you're writing a book yeah you're writing a novel this is because that's the, you, you used to seeing these fonts it's, it's official it's work and stuff like that then instead of just like these are your secrets you're writing down yeah you, you, you like might a use diary. a pen to write to, you know a secret letter to someone or something like that you know um it's not an official uh dear mm. mr smith uh, email <laughs> yeah. sort of thing uh unless that's what you're going for you know? it's kind of <laughs> less formal less kind of finished absolutely fewer expectations and that exactly because that's why my notebooks have half written paragraphs in and every now and then i will look at those notebooks and i'll go that paragraph could become something mm-hmm. i don't ex- you know a lot of the stuff i don't look at for a, another year and then i've got actually that's a brilliant idea and then sometimes it's just like i have no idea what i was talking about then. <laughs> what was that but then e- even that i'd look at it again you know <laughs> and and I, i'll have a great idea from it so you know just scroll things write things but just make sure you keep them any i've got screwed up bits of paper which mm-hmm. every now and then i will unscrew and i go that is a gem that's a gem <laughs> and even if it's not it's not going in the bin yet yeah <laughs> Well, that, that's basically, you've exactly answered what I was going to ask you, which was sort of what you would advise someone to do if they feel kind of a bit intimidated by the process of starting something. Because I think we agree on that. You've just got to sit down and do something. It doesn't, like, no expectations. Just do it. Yeah. With no expectations. Absolutely. Just write, you know, write anything. Uh, write about your, your favourite animal. Try doing something which is maybe, you know, factual or something. Mm-hmm. You know, what you did that day and you know um what you're gonna eat for for tea you mm-hmm. know what you're gonna eat for tea and how food makes you feel write about an, an emotion write about anything that you think you can it's something you saw something you know um maybe not something you saw on tv because that's someone else's writing you're writing about <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but you know I, I wrote a whole routine once about um a squirrel eating a chip because you know <laughs> it's just like oh he thinks he's a man and, was you know, he mates with the seagull <laughs> well yeah that's it, it it's, it's, I, I, I like a bit of anthropomorphy you know in the turning oh, nice animals in uh into human beings because mm-hmm. it it's just like you 
people do it all the time you know yeah i have conversations with animals all the time it's just yeah. like you know talking to my especially dog especially in lockdown god yeah <laughs> full-on uh, conversations absolutely with the cat. Whether, you know <laughs> the spider on the wall what are you doing here what do you want from me <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh, it, it, it's that sort of thing imagine a conversation between you mm. if 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 an animal could talk and uh, you know had to do your job <laughs> something like that <laughs> Again, you've like so beautifully segued into what I wanted to ask you about, which was kind of what you would do if you were feeling kind of creatively blocked or like not inspired on a particular day. But you've basically just answered that anyway, just sort of picking a random thing and just writing I about it. Absolutely pick random things. Um, anything. I'll, sometimes I'll uh, flip through um, sort of an encyclopedia, mm. find something, just like look at it. You know, or just um, random image search on, on the internet. And yeah. Go, what the heck's that? Don't look at the description, just describe the picture. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got um, a newspaper, if you're still one of those people, you know, grab a sentence from the newspaper or a magazine and base something around that. There's so many ways of, of sparking some sort of interest. But if you're really stuck, just leave it. Go do something not like cleaning nothing like that maybe do something that you actually enjoy like i love cooking oh and yeah. so that i plan an amazing meal i put the music on and while i do it i find it a sort of a great sort of therapy my ideas flow in i'm dancing around the kitchen listening mm -hmm. to some some uh i'm imagining I, you dressed exactly like this in the kitchen oh, there's a lot of tweed <laughs> but i've got a batman apron on instead <laughs> but yeah Very um, nice. I'm, you know and, and i'm making usually if i'm feeling like a, a really good quality macaroni cheese and you're, you're planning which cheeses you got in there and you, you're going there's the recipe don't need that just loads of cheese there we are. all of the cheese exactly it's all you need so to wrap up our lovely chat which i very much enjoyed thanks dan so do I. to wrap it up i want you to tell me what you would say to someone who's watched this and thought he's a cool guy i would like to get into doing what he does i want to get into writing comedy i want to get into that what would you what would you suggest that they do well first of all read you know read if you can i mean it, it's uh it sounds obvious but read and see what sort of things you like hmm. find something you like and imagine if you were going to write something like that or if it's a comedian you, you know what is it you like about that sort of that comedy is it you know surreal is it weird or is it just punchy one-liners and then you literally just start formulating ideas get your pen and paper writing ideas writing uh, um you know short things i'm not saying if you like a, a stephen king write a novel <laughs> the size of his straight I away he's like oh here's how i i, I begin no uh, just write some ideas I, imagine this you say you, you got stephen king it's like what is it you like about it the, the fact that he's he's you know write some terrifying creatures and some terrifying the, is the scariest thing is is, is humanity <laughs> that you, the humans that he writes so you, you you find that and you write about what would you know terrify you yeah. uh, so you'd write about your fears and you write something personal and you just um just write as much as you can use real examples whenever you can use reality because if you're going to show this to someone and it'll probably be a while before you actually do people will recognize that realism mm -hmm. they will recognize the reality even if you're doing something surreal unless it's got some truth in it i mean if you were des to design a magical world yeah and there was no truth in it and people could just zap anything into existence yeah there's no um there's no threat there's no uh there's nothing to latch on nothing to, to latch on yeah. and you, you just get bored easily because anything can happen mm. but if you've got like um sort of like real danger real emotion uh and then something surreal happens you know then you you can take people on a journey and they will believe anything so mm -hmm. just um think of your emotions think of a, a, a real situation write about it and then turn it into anything you want as for performing it that can be difficult at the moment mm -hmm. but look at groups on online there are groups online that um do you know poetry and and um stories and there are writing groups and those are sometimes the best way of finding like-minded people yeah and then you can meet up and you, they're usually really really um welcoming they really are they love people who've not done it before and comedy gr groups uh there's not 
anything live going on at the moment mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean you can't get involved there's a lot of uh, people online who are willing to sort of take talk you through like where the gigs will be in the future mm -hmm. just join these groups and uh, uh don't get involved in politics <laughs> <laughs> well we are going to have um a facebook group for my creative brain where Excellent. people will be able to sort of show things that they've done there's also going to be the opportunity to talk to you on a Absolutely. Zoom after this episode is first broadcast. So that'll be very, very exciting. There's going to be details for that in the description. And now to finish off, we're going to do a little bit of a writing activity to set you on your way. I'm going to do it. Dan's going to teach me. It's going to be great. So to finish off this episode, Dan is going to take us through a little creative activity that you can follow along at home if you want to get into creative writing, get your juices flowing. So Dan, what are we going to do? If you want to try this, then choose one of your favourite fairy tales. Um, make it a simple one, not one of the overcomplicated ones, and make a list of the characters. So here we had three little pigs and a wolf. Then think of a genre. A genre. Now, that could be thriller, drama, horror, comedy, and that will help with the setting. Produce the setting. We chose a, a caravan park for ours. And then start populating it. You start putting your, your characters in the right place and write a little paragraph describing what the place looks like, what the people are like, give them names, make them real, and a brief outline of what is going to happen in that episode or story. It's as simple as that. Well, one of the most famous forms of writing is something that most people know, are, are fairy tales. And it's good if you're going to start writing to get something that is well known. That gives you more opportunity then to sort of like put your own mark on it. And this happens with a lot of professional writers um, sort of will take um, a well-known tale and turn it on its head. Now, we're going to do an exercise that will we'll start with that. We're going to start with something relatively simple, like the three little pigs. So, right. yeah, the three little pigs. First thing you're going to have to do is write down the characters. OK, so write down the characters. So who are the characters in the three little pigs? The pigs. There are, indeed. <laughs> How many are there? Three. Three little pigs. Now, you're going to have to delve a little bit deeper than that. You're going to actually have to give me their, their names. Are they family or are they just friends? I mean, you sort of mm. give them a little bit more of a background now. You start to uh, look deeper into that pig's life. I think the pigs are women. The pigs are women. The pigs Absolutely. are women. Why I just not? decided. It's, it's never been established. The sex has never been involved in this. But there we are. So this is great. So there's this, these three um, pigs. Now, these pigs, sometimes it's good to actually start with a, a genre, a, a type of thing. If you're a, into your thrillers or if you're into your um, uh, sort of like soap operas or you, you, you can write it in the style of that. So that will sometimes inform your characters. It'll make you think about your characters. So, so what are we going to um, set this up as? Are we going to set this up as horror, thriller, comedy, or is this going to be something like, you know, like Well, the based on the, the two names that I just wrote down, I haven't thought of a third one yet, but I wrote down Sheila and Eileen. <laughs> Sheila and Eileen. And I'm now, trying to think what the third one's called. What's um, the third one called? <laughs> so, okay, is this, is this some 80s Australian soap? <laughs> I think it is, yeah. Okay, <laughs> Sheila and Eileen. What's a, what's a third name that goes with them? Doris. Doris. There we are. Doris. Okay, I'm, I'm already thinking of them talking Australian in an Australian they accent. They sort of sit around in the house. Am I going too far ahead? No, already? no. I'm imagining Absolutely. <laughs> this is the whole point. You are picturing it. Now, they're living together here or are they living next to each other? I mean, because... They're living together. They're living together. This is brilliant because they've, mm -hmm. they've combined... Uh, uh, it's, it's already more modern because back in the day, they would create their own houses. They would create their own houses. But nowadays... They, they live together because it, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. it, it's expensive. It, it's modernised already. So you've got that. Um, they have got... Uh, what sort of house have they got? I'm trying to remember the three little pigs now. Well, in the actual Fall three little pigs, they start with um, straw, they work mm -hmm. to wood, and then uh, they, get, they get brickwork at the end. Maybe they like in a caravan. 
a caravan. I mean, that's it. They, you know, they, they're not the richest pigs. They're not the, and it must be hard, all of them living in the same caravan. I mean, it's, they're these faded, like glamour pigs. They're kind of oh, right. a little bit past their prime. They sort of, well, maybe they relied on their looks when they were younger yeah. without actually, and now they're kind of regretting, you know, maybe not. And they look down the on the younger pigs, just kind of like. Yeah, what do they know? As yeah. as as, as they yeah. drink their their, their bottles yeah. of of, of uh, I don't know. Malibu. Oh, they drink cocktails in the day as cocktails, well. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> cocktails with with um, vodka instead of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I feel personally attacked by that, Dan. I used to drink vodka in uni. Well, that's very different to being. <laughs> and then you, you know, realise that it wasn't real vodka. Like exactly. So you've yeah. already got this 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 picture now. There's another <laughs> character that we're looking at now, and we, we've got them settled down. They're they're drinking, and, mm-hmm. and that would probably be their life mm-hmm. for a while wouldn't it? it but they need something now to change them and i reckon that this is a time to introduce the fourth uh you know character the wolf yes okay he's like the eligible bachelor who's oh, not really yeah. that eligible but he's kind of like he's there so they all kind of fight over him so he's so, got a little cravat on the go oh, a little cravat he's he, yeah. you know, a bit of a bit of a handsome rogue kind of kind of thing yeah yeah, yeah. but he's he's like i was going to say a silver fox but he's a, a silver wolf fox wolf there he's got we a are little, little little bits of silver in his oh in yeah his fur. that's yeah. it and he's got that 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 sort of smile that makes people melt yeah, yeah. exactly so they're, they're, this is already turning... You've built up their relationship marvellously <laughs> here. I mean, there's these three women. They're getting on. They're not necessarily happy with their life, but they're not going to change it. There's nothing going to change. And then this man comes along, mm-hmm. this m- moves into town, gets the caravan next door or something. Yeah, and I think he's sort of, like, playing them off against each other. Yeah, playing off. I've definitely gone for full-on 80s, like, Yeah, this drama, is definitely... This yeah. is it. Uh, so, so, this is what you start doing. You start making these notes, and you start making... Um, you building up the story as it goes along. So... Mm-hmm. What is his end game, though? What's his end game? What's he want? He's playing them off each other, but what's he intent to get them, get from them? He basically just wants to have them all admire him, so he gets to have all of their interests. But he's not really, he's not really interested in like properly settling down with any one of them. He just wants them all to kind of fight over him, really. Okay, he just what? He, he just likes causing trouble. Then. Yeah. He's, he's, a, oh he's my causing God. trouble. And he's his name is Harris. I just decided. Harris, yeah. as in a type of tweed. That is why I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, Harris. Okay, so Harris is there, and he's he's uh, mm-hmm. um, now. In the sort of traditional story, those are the characters, and that's mm-hmm. it. But you see. You now have the opportunity to turn this on its head a bit. Maybe you could introduce another character. So they, these women are, are arguing over him now. They're, they're starting to like. Mm-hmm. They're starting to sort of like, um, you know, they're doing more makeup on. They get getting dressed. They're mm-hmm. not just lying around in 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 uh, what do you call it sports Fighting wear. Over the, the prime uh, chair outside the caravan to sort of sit there exactly, like, like you know. Harris. They're just literally. Um, they, they're, they're tarting themselves up, making sure mm-hmm. that you know they uh, they look good at all mm-hmm. times, and you know. Despite the fact that they're just living out of a caravan, exactly. there's not that much space for all the Belittling stuff. each other in front mm-hmm. of him just to make each other look better. So, they, but he's he's after just he, he just wants this this trouble. He's causing this trouble. But maybe he wants something else. Maybe think about other things that something a bit deeper than just that. Maybe there's something that they don't know that he does. A bit of information that he knows maybe about where they live. They're actually they're actually all in line to like inherit something that they don't know about that's brilliant you see that's brilliant and this is what From you do the the daddy duke pig their sisters and their daddy duke pig they thought he was bankrupt when he died but actually he'd like stowed some money away somewhere that that's great or maybe <laughs> or maybe they have you know yeah a daddy duke or a, a relative they didn't know ex- existed oh, but yeah. he did because he's been like look he's always he's on the sniff for this sort of thing yeah. and it's not the first time he's done it he's been to, oh, to yeah, he's like a serial serial like they're not i was gonna say he like looks for all the widows i don't think they're widows though. they're not widows but he looks um you know he looks at the deaths and stuff of uh, uh, you know he looks at the death announcements and, yeah. and, and, and uh, of all the people and he finds out any living relatives i oh, mean when you see him when he's sat in his little deck chair and he's like reading the paper and they're like oh he's so sophisticated look at him and he's actually just looking at the obituaries like yeah literally <laughs> exactly and he's building up this and so he's basically gonna 
fight over all of these women and he's you know trying to sort of like all of these women are fighting over him and he's just trying to get in with them all mm-hmm. so he can get this money which they don't even know yeah. exists doesn't even matter what really happens with the relationship with any of them just because he's trying to get the money yeah now that 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 is how you build up a story. You start off with something simple like the three little pigs, yeah. and you you and now you could literally write a script or based on that. Now yeah. you could literally uh, you could imagine them. You know you know uh, you could imagine Sheila and Eileen and Doris there. You know what's going smoking and drinking uh, outside <laughs> the thing. And your trotters up. Uh, <laughs> and it just, it, and you've you've got it in your head there. You've got it there. It's oh, and they all fight so about there's like a particular cocktail that they all like, but they all fight about how you make it properly. Oh right They will have a different opinion on it this is it (laughs) It's this sort of thought You just keep making notes And you make notes And you make notes And you build up a real, real picture And this is uh, what you do And now what I would get you to do Is um, I would get you to write A story based around that now And I would get you to write um, You know, a five minute sort of A a paragraph or or, or so About about the plot Mm -hmm. About what happens And then potential next episodes Oh, I mean, I'm definitely going to be dreaming it tonight. <laughs> Just being like, what's going to happen and to Sheila and Eileen and Doris? That's what writing is. It's literally taking ideas. That, if you think about it, every story has been told. Mm-hmm. It just needs to be retold in a different way. Mm-hmm. Every story has been told. Um but you just keep retelling. We, we we learn and retell and reinvent things. And this is a way of, of doing it. You get something that... Everyone's heard the three little pigs, and you could even like at this stage. I'm thinking about from like a music point of view. You could even at this stage just take out the fact that they're pigs and a wolf. Yeah, and it's just, it's just a completely different story that just came from that as the germ of the idea. Exactly. You, Although it's you funnier, take that, I mean, funnier if they're pigs. No, I mean <laughs> they don't have to be pigs. You know, the the thing is. Um, you look at them and you're just like you know people could call look at those three pigs mm. you, see, you know there's there's people could comment about them they're yeah. just like you and know. they comment on him being a wolf just because he's like yeah. he's predatory. predatory yeah and it, it, the thing is and uh, that's all that three little pigs and you know little red riding hood the wolf and stuff these were <laughs> the, the metaphors mm. they're metaphors the wolf wasn't a wolf he was a he was a a dirty man yeah he was a dirty man. He's definitely a dirty yeah. Harris, you dirty man. Exactly. He's a dirty man. Um, <laughs> and if you look at the or- origins of all these fairy mm. tales, they were warnings. Yeah. And this is exactly that, but it's also entertainment <laughs> to watch at um, uh, after the news at, uh, <laughs> at half past one, and then again at half past five every day in the eighties. <laughs> well, if, if I ever make a sketch show. Which is a thing that I did think one day, I was just like, oh, I'd love to have a sketch show. Imagine that. This will be one of the recurring sketches. Absolutely. <laughs> you, can, you can picture it. So, well done. You have now created your own soap opera. What, okay, here's the ultimate test, though. It's what the, what's the soap opera called? Uh, my first thought was bacon. <laughs> <laughs> bacon. Just bacon. Just bacon. There we are. What's the... Because you... Bringing home the bacon. Bringing home the bacon. That's, there you go. Well, which is literally what he's trying to do. Yeah, exactly. He's trying to do. I'm going to be thinking about this for ages now, Dan. <laughs> and then you're going to think about it and you go, well, if this keeps gets repeated for another, uh, you know, another season, next? another season, what's going to, oh, what are going to have to, we're going to have to actually find some good in him then because often characters change yeah. and then you go, right, well, maybe he's only doing it because he's got a sick child and he's literally <gasps> trying his best. He's doing it, going about it the dun, wrong way. Dun, 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 and then, <laughs> literally, yeah. <laughs> and you just keep going and you keep going and you can milk it for as long as you want. Beautiful. But, it's going to happen. Bringing home the bacon, coming to a TV near you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for joining us, Dan Mitchell. You're I like welcome. you very much. Like you too. <laughs> Join us next week when I will be talking to the fabulous visual artist Gigi Jones.